Mathematica Online offers a variety of methods to enter calculations, making it really easy to get started. Let's start by making a new section cell. I'm going to do this by clicking at the bottom of my notebook to make sure I have the cursor in the right place. And then I'll use the keyboard shortcut Alt-4 to make a new section. I'll call this section Means of Starting. Now I want to make two subsection cells because there are two ways to input in Mathematica Online and I want to have a subsection for each of them. I'm going to press the down arrow key to get my cursor ready and now I'll create a new subsection by using the keyboard shortcut Alt-5 or Command-5 on the Mac. Let's call the first one uh, Freeform Input then do uh, this one more time with the keyboard shortcut Alt-5 uh, to create a subsection called Wolfram Language. Okay, now let's uh, put the cursor underneath Freeform Input by using the arrow keys uh, to get it where it needs to be. And let's start doing some calculations. Mathematica Online and other Wolfram products are unique in that they allow you to immediately start getting work done by giving commands in plain English instead of having to learn commands or syntax first. One of the ways you can do this is by clicking on that cell insertion assistant plus sign and choosing free form input. When you do that, you'll see an orange square with an equal sign appear in the cell, and the cursor is blinking to the right of that. That equal sign means that you can tell Mathematica Online to do something by using plain English. Let's type integral of cosine of 2x. And then hold down the shift key and press the enter key. This shift plus enter combination tells Mathematica Online that we are finished entering input and are ready for it to run the calculation. And when we do that, we then see the result. Okay, so let's look at what happened when we pressed shift enter. Mathematica Online takes the free form input that we entered and sends it to the parser running on servers at Wolfram. The parser says, okay, you asked us to do this, and here is the result of that command. In this case, the result is one half of sine of 2x. Now, freeform input makes it so easy to get started with Mathematica Online because the parser is really good at understanding what you want. This means you can dive right in and start getting work done without having to know the Wolfram language first. Along with the results, you may have seen a little bar pop up. This is the suggestions bar, and it contains some suggestions for things you might want to do next. If you don't want to see this bar, you can click the X icon to hide it, and similarly, if you don't see the bar and you want to see it, you can click the arrow to show it. The suggestions bar is really useful for a couple of reasons. First, it's smart. You will still only see it when the cursor is in an output cell. So if I go up to the freeform input section cell and click to set the cursor here, uh, the suggestions bar disappears. But if I click back in the output cell, then that bar reappears. Second, the suggestions bar is context aware, so it only shows suggestions that are relevant to the type of output it's currently looking at. So if your output is textual in nature, the suggestions bar is going to give you options to format the text, but it won't give you options for things like finding a numerical approximation, since that wouldn't make sense in that case. And finally, the suggestions bar is adaptive, so it learns your specific workflow and the type of operations you like to do, and it will tailor its suggestions accordingly. So the more you use it, the more useful it becomes. So let's take a look at how to use the suggestions bar. We see that one of the suggestions is to take our result and simplify it. Let's choose this option of simplify by clicking on it. When we do that, we see that Mathematica simplifies our expression to cosine of x times sine of x. That's pretty neat. And like with freeform input, we don't need to know any Mathematica commands to do this. We just make choices from the suggestions that were provided to us. Let's take a look at another example of using freeform input and the suggestions bar. Since we are ready to create a new input cell, let's press the equal sign on our keyboard as our first step. When we do that, you'll see that we get the same orange icon that we had before, and now we are ready to give our command in English. So let's type plot of one half sine of 2x to visualize the result we got in the previous step. As before, Mathematica pings the Wolfram server and then returns the result. 
You'll see that the suggestions bar offers commands that are relevant for visualizations. For example, by clicking background and using the menu that pops up, we can change the color to goldenrod to apply a different look to our graphic. As an aside, you'll also see that these cells have little in and out labels with numbers to them on the left. That's because Mathematica keeps a running list of the calculations that have been performed during a session. A cell with input is called an input cell, and its matching partner is called an output cell. Like before, you can double-click cell brackets to hide and show cell contents, and input and output cells are really flexible. So you can double-click an input cell to hide the output. Uh, you'll see that cell bracket with a little triangle again, or you can double-click an output cell to hide the input, in which case you get a cell bracket with a triangle on the top indicating there is something hidden above the displayed cell. Hiding input can be especially useful when you want to create a clean looking document that only shows the results but not any of the commands used to create those results. There's another way to enter input in Mathematica Online and that's by using the Wolfram language directly. The Wolfram language is a collection of thousands of commands and functions for doing all sorts of things, and it's the programming vocabulary, so to speak, that powers all of the Wolfram products. Freeform input is great for getting started, or even for casual use of Mathematica, but once you want to start building up more sophisticated commands or writing programs, you'll want to start using the Wolfram language directly because you'll have the flexibility and power to tell Mathematica exactly what you want it to do. Luckily, the Wolfram language is very high level, which makes it easy to get started, and there's just a few things you'll need to remember. So let's go back to our notebook and make a sub subsection cell um, below the Wolfram language and call it four basic rules. Now let's start a new cell uh, with Command or Alt-7 keyboard shortcut to make a text cell and enter our first rule, which is capital letters on all command names. Let's create another text cell and enter the second rule, uh, which is square brackets surround function arguments. What this means is if you see a capitalized word like plot and then it has a pair of square brackets next to it, then plot is a command and inside of those square brackets are the specific pieces of information needed to make plot do something in particular. Okay, so let's make uh, another text cell uh, to enter rule number three, which is curly braces are used for lists and ranges. And finally, we make one more text cell to enter uh, rule number four, which is shift plus enter to evaluate input. This last one is really important because Mathematic Online is a powerful tool for creating technical documents. Pressing the enter key by itself will create a carriage return or new line. So it's shift and enter uh, or enter on numeric keypad that will tell Mathematica Online that you're ready for it to evaluate some type of input. Let's use the Wolfram language to calculate a definite integral and to see these four rules in action. I know I want to integrate something, uh, so let's start a new input cell below our numbered list. This time, we are not going to choose an input type, we are just going to start typing. That's okay, because if you remember, by default, Mathematica Online expects an input cell to contain Wolfram language code unless you make a different choice when creating your cell. As we start typing integrate, you'll see this pop-up menu appear, and it's narrowing down the possible list of choices by automatically guessing the command we want to use. We can ignore it, or hit the escape key to make it disappear, or we can use the arrow keys and press enter, or point and click uh, with the mouse to select the command name we want. Once we do that, we see a menu with double uh, chevrons, and clicking that shows us the possible ways to enter this command, depending on what we want to do. Let's select the second one to calculate a definite integral, and that pastes in a template for us to fill in. For the function f, let's enter x squared by typing x and then shift and 6 together to get the caret to raise x to the power of 2. And for the function variable, let's use x and then integrate over the domain of negative 10 to 10. Then we use shift enter uh, to evaluate. Before we discuss the result, 
Here are all the rules in action. The command integrate is capitalized. There are square brackets surrounding the function arguments, which is the expression we want to integrate, and the variable we want to integrate with respect to. We see that the interval we integrated over is placed in a list containing the variable x and the minimum and maximum, uh, and we use the shift enter to evaluate the input. Now, let's take a look at that result, which was returned as 2000 over 3. Mathematica Online will always give you the most exact answer possible, depending on the command you have used and the type of arguments you have supplied. In this case, maybe what we were really after is the numerical approximation. So we can click numerical value to get a numerical result. We'll discuss this a bit more uh, in the next video as well. An important feature of the design of the Wolfram language is the coherence of how everything was developed. And as a result, once you know how to use one command, you know how to use a bunch of other ones as well. For example, the syntax for definite integration and plotting is similar. Both ask for the function in question and a corresponding domain. If we go up to our integrate command, change it to plot, and then reevaluate with shift enter, we get a new result without changing any of the other syntax. Let's enter another plot, but this time do it in 3D. Start typing the word plot, and you'll notice plot 3D appears on the pop-up menu. Select plot 3D, click the down arrows, and choose the first template from the list. Even though we haven't seen this particular command before, let's see if we can fill it out using what we've already learned. For the function, let's enter sine open square bracket of x plus y close square bracket. To move to the next placeholder, hit tab. For the first set of arguments, enter x and then hit tab, negative 3, hit tab again, and then 3. And for the second set of arguments, we'll enter y, negative 3, and 3. When we evaluate, we see a three-dimensional plot of the surface of sine of x plus y. So now that we've seen a variety of ways to get started, using freeform input, the suggestions bar, and typing in Wolfram language commands, let's quickly explore one last resource to help you when you're first starting out, and that is the Documentation Center. You can get there by clicking on the icon of the book at the top of the page. Once there, you can browse by topics, or if you're more impatient like I am, you can type in a search term. So if I type plot, and then do a search, the first result I click on is a reference page for the plot command. Now the first thing you'll see is a sort of dictionary definition of the command up at the top, and then additional sections like details and options, which are great for learning about the command in much more detail. Personally, I tend to jump right down to examples, and you'll find both simple and advanced examples here. It's a great way to explore and learn about the different ways to use the command. And it's easy to copy an example from the documentation into your own notebook so you can use it as a starting point for your own calculations. So if I go to this first example, I can click on it and copy the text into my notebook. Then I can evaluate it as is or make changes uh, like changing sine to cosine. Now if I scroll further down on this documentation page, I'll also see other commands that are related to plot in some way, along with links to tutorials for doing certain types of operations and guide pages, which are portals to learning about general topics uh, of using the Wolfram language, and which link to reference pages like the one we are on, as well as other tutorials and examples. Now, when I'm done with the documentation, I can click the Cloud Files icon to restore the file browser or toggle the entire sidebar on or off using this icon. Okay, so now that we've built up a notebook and learned different ways to enter input, the next section uh, will look doing exact in numerical calculations, assigning variables, and how to create your own functions as well.